we had a blood test that told us this patient's going to get psoriatic arthritis, it would actually help a lot. It's not always that easy to diagnose. And I will say, you all know that even our rheumatology colleagues are not that good at it. Um, so, uh, you know, it really brings us to the question of which drug for which patient. One of the first things I look at when the patient walks in the door, are they obese? And if they're obese, I'm not going to give them any of the weaker drugs. They're definitely ending up on the more effective drugs, IL-23, IL-17s. Uh, infliximab is given milligrams per kilogram. So if I used a lot of that, which I don't, I would think about that. Um, if they have psoriatic arthritis, they're probably going to get a TNF blocker, which I used to use. Now they're probably going to get an IL-17 blocker. If they have uh, inflammatory bowel disease, you know, I can't give them an IL-17 blocker. Um, if, you know, uh, if they have cardiovascular risk factors, the data right now is fairly good for TNF blockers. It's starting to come out for the newer drugs, and I think we will have it. But right now, the data still is there for, um, for the, uh, the TNF blockers. Uh, if somebody has uh, uh, hepatitis B, if they're uh, HBSAG positive, that's a whole new story, and I always will follow those patients in conjunction with a uh, um, hepatologist uh, because you want to make sure that their viral titers don't go up when you treat them. If somebody's hepatitis C positive, uh, there's a great study with Enbrel, uh, but having said that, we have the new drugs that should be able to cure hepatitis C most of the time or all the time almost. Um, so, you know, there are many factors that we consider that we think about. And, you know, I'll never forget, I was asked by the Saras Foundation to lecture um, uh, over 100 patients who had psoriasis. And I gave this lecture called Which Drug for Which Patient? And I had them all stand up. And then I said, when I'm done reading the following list of comorbidities, anyone who doesn't have one of those stay standing, everybody else sit down. And I started with, are you overweight? Do you have hypertension, diabetes? Do you smoke cigarettes? Uh, do you have joint pain? Uh, do you have hepatitis, a B or C? Do you have lupus? And I, I went through a long list of comorbidities, and then at the end I said, okay, anyone has any of those, sit down. Out of 110 people, one was left standing. So, um, you know, I, I uh, always don't like it when, dr when insurance companies tell me, oh, no, you have to use this drug even though you want to use that drug because they're not thinking about the whole patient. Mark, um, one thing that I wanted to also point out is uh, I tend to use drugs. So you talked about patient walks into your office have, you know, bio-naive, but bio-experience is something that we sure. more commonly even come in contact with. And, you know, I think the IL-23s as a class and one of the IL-17s has very good data to suggest that, uh, you know, treating, using it as a, in a bio-experienced patient is just as good as a bio-naive right. patient. That is correct. I definitely will write for those drugs, uh, if not a first line, if I'm thinking about it, if they're already on a drug, I think about those drugs that are uh, good, as good in bio-experience as bio-naive. Okay. Well, this has been extremely informative. Before we end this discussion, I'd like to get final thoughts from each of our panelists, Dr. Hahn, Dr. Glick, Dr. Gottlieb. George? I mean, we're very lucky to be in an era where we have all of these great options for our patients. And I think it's important that we really push ourselves and push our patients to really figure out what's ideal and what's a great outcome for them because we have the capability to. And I think one, one popular word these days among, among the millennials, I think, is bespoke. And so I, I'm looking forward to a day and age where we can have a patient come in, we'll ask them a set of questions, and we'll find the right drug, which drug for which patient, right? That bespoke drug that's ideal for them. And, uh, you know, that'll be great. Well, I, I just think it's really amazing where we've come over the last 20 years, uh, 30 years, really. Um, you know, you think about, you know, bench to bedside research. And you know, some basic scientist spends their whole life trying to get one great, you know, one, one piece of something, some some breakthrough that might affect a patient. And here we've done, you know, all this stuff. That, you know, from basic science to drug companies, manufacturers coming up with drugs to people doing clinical trials. But really, where we have to give the best, the most credit is to our patients who put the stuff in them that they had no idea what they were doing, and they really benefited so many people. And psoriasis treatment is a different different today because of them. I couldn't agree more. I, I think for me, it's really about the doctor-patient relationship and really educating our patients really about where we have come and that there are a lot of possibilities for them. Uh, I still think it's challenging for patients to want to make the move to come and 
see their physician, whether it's their primary care physician or their dermatologist. Now when they come to us, we have a tremendous number of options for them, a full toolbox. We can practice with targeted therapies and, and precisely, and really manage those comorbidities carefully without injuring our patients. So that's a really good time. So I'm, I'm gonna close with uh, one of my favorite quotes from a close friend, Bonnie Aluski, who said, she can't wait for the day to come when her residents ask her, so what did psoriasis used to look like? <laughs> um, so I wanna thank you all for your contributions to this discussion. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.